In October of 2018, a 26-year-old postal worker went missing in Chicago after leaving her apartment to run errands. But suspicious surveillance footage and a thought-to-be fake sick call made into her work the next day have led her family and investigators to believe something sinister happened to her. This is the story of Kiara Coles. Kiara Michelle Coles was born in Chicago, Illinois to Karen Phillips and Joseph Coles on September 24th in either 1991 or 1992. So most commonly, it's been printed that Kiara was newly 26 years old when she disappeared in 2018, making her birth year 1992. But we wanted to include that there has been some speculation about this and other facts in the case, including the date on which she went missing. So, unfortunately, there is a lot of misinformation floating around regarding her disappearance, and she definitely didn't receive the media attention that she deserved when it happened four years ago. So, hopefully, we can drive some traffic to the case and her family can have some answers soon. Yeah, that's the goal. That is the goal every single time. But let's get into what we do know about Kiera's life. So, Kiera was the fourth of five children in a very tight-knit family in Chicago. So, she had four siblings. And she was especially close with her mom, Karen, and the two still spoke on the phone every single day. Karen described her daughter as ambitious and said she had numerous talents and hobbies that she was pursuing. She loved to do makeup and was the designated makeup artist of her friend group. So for like any kind of occasion or night out, Kiera was helping everybody look their best. Kiera was very active on Snapchat. In fact, when you search her name, many of her pictures have those cute Snapchat filters on them. And she loved to dance and just really be in the spotlight. And down the road, she wanted to pursue a career in media, as long as, according to her mom, everybody could just hear her voice. But until that happened, Kiera worked full-time as a letter carrier for the United States Postal Service. Kiera had worked for the post office since April of 2017, so for a year and a half until she went missing, and had recently transitioned from part-time to full-time. She was stationed at the Charles Hayes Post Office on Exchange Avenue in the South Shore neighborhood of the south side of Chicago. South Shore is situated about a 20-minute drive directly south of downtown Chicago, and Kiera's post office was just two blocks from Lake Michigan. When she wasn't working at the post office, she also drove for Lyft part-time, which is a car service I'm sure all of you guys know, as she had incurred some pretty big expenses lately due to the fact that she had recently moved into her own apartment, bought herself a car, and she was also three months pregnant. So she was really out there working as hard as she could at as many hours as she could to support herself and prepare to support her baby as well. Yeah. But she wasn't completely alone in this. I mean, she was very self-sufficient. Like Heath just said, she had her own apartment. She bought herself a car. But Kira had also been dating a serious boyfriend, Joshua, or Josh Simmons, who also worked for the Postal Service. And they had been together for six years, or since she was around 20 years old when they met. And on Kira's Facebook, it actually states that they were engaged. And Kira's mother, Karen, spoke kindly of Josh as if he was a part of the family, especially since, you know, the family had known him for six years as well. And she remembers him as a decent man and a good match for her daughter. So Karen said of him, quote, He just had manners, never raised his voice. I always gave him the benefit of the doubt. However, their relationship like most of them, had not been perfect. Despite how long they'd been dating and just the seriousness of their partnership, Josh had been unfaithful to Kiera on multiple occasions and even had children with three other women that resulted from him cheating on Kiera, one of whom was pregnant at the same time as Kiera was. In general, the two, Kira and Josh, always worked things out and found their way back to each other. But the same could not be said for Kiera's relationship with the mothers of Josh's children. 
Karen reported later in an interview that shortly before her daughter's disappearance, Kiera had a conflict with one of Josh's baby mothers that was bad enough that it resulted in her deciding that Kiera could no longer come near her house for any reason. And I mean, this is sad because obviously it seems like Kiera really deserved better than this, better than to be cheated on multiple times by a man she loved, and then for him to have kids with three other women and then get her pregnant, especially since she was still so young, but she did want to settle down and had reportedly felt like she and Josh were in a good place and that she could handle his past infidelities. I mean, it definitely makes the whole situation a lot harder. Yeah, especially in regards to her disappearance, as we will discuss. Well, because the lovely Kira really wanted this to work out and felt like it could, all the women and Josh would need to sort out how they were going to peacefully co-parent. But other than that hiccup, Kira and Josh seemed to be thrilled to be starting a new family together. According to her mom, Karen, Kira had been working for years to become financially stable and independent enough to provide for a growing family, and she had even just moved into her own apartment like we mentioned. Her ultimate goal was just to be able to provide for her family. Also, according to Karen, Kira was thrilled about this new journey and was so excited to become a mom. Although she had yet to find out the gender that they were expecting, Karen claimed Kira was sure that it was a boy and that, if it was, she had her heart set on the name Joshua Jr. She stated, quote, Kira was going to name the baby a junior. She always said that. If it's a boy, she'll name him a junior. The baby was due on April 23rd, 2019. Kiera's new apartment was near the intersection of 81st Street and Vernon Avenue in the East Chatham neighborhood of Chicago, about a 12-minute drive west from the post office at which she worked. On Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018, fall was officially in swing and just painted this bustling Illinois city with orange and yellow. It was a cloudy and chilly day when Kiera, who was about six months away from giving birth, excitedly called her mom while shopping for baby supplies. Regarding this phone call, Karen stated, quote, She was just so excited. She didn't even know what to get. But the next day, Karen didn't hear from her daughter, which, as we said, was not common for this mother-daughter duo, as they were in consistent contact, especially at a time like this when Kiera was pregnant. Karen called Kiera, but kept getting her voicemail and just assumed that she was working since she did have two jobs after all. Karen also contacted the post office to see if she had been at work that day, but was told Kiera had called out sick. When Karen questioned the employee who took the call, they claimed that whoever called had sounded like Kiera. So this is the first red flag for her mom. And for this employee to say they sounded like Kiera, as if there was any sort of idea that it wasn't her, is very spooky. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, you know, wouldn't you think that this employee would maybe even obviously know what Kira's voice sounded like. Yeah, so, you would imagine. Yeah, so it, that this is very strange. It's very strange. But of course, her mom is questioning this because she was surprised that Kira hadn't told her that she was sick herself. So by Thursday, October 4th, 2018, two days since she last heard from her daughter, Karen had a feeling that something was just not right. And on one side, you know, Karen may be thinking, well, if she's sick, maybe she's sleeping more than usual or just resting. And that's why I haven't heard from her. So it does make sense why Karen hadn't pushed the matter, you know, despite feeling a bit weird about it all. Yeah, that that definitely makes sense. Um, But after two days of silence, she decided to just drive by Kira's apartment to check on her herself and saw that her car was still parked out front, but she wasn't answering the door. And on top of this, she still was not answering her phone. So she once again contacted the post office and learned that Kiera had not reported to work that day, meaning that she didn't call in sick like she supposedly had done the previous day. She just didn't show up to work at all. At this point, Karen felt even more concerned about this whole situation, so she contacted the police and asked that they do a wellness check. She also called Kira's boyfriend Josh and asked if he had seen or spoken to her, to which he responded that he had not. 
And for those wondering, it doesn't really seem like they live together. So although they were expecting a baby together and they were dating or possibly engaged, it's also possible that they have gone a couple of days without seeing each other just because they are not in the same residence. Totally. And, you know, this still doesn't look good for Josh because considering they work together, he probably would have heard about her calling out or noticed her not there, even if they were out, you know, dropping off letters and packages in the city separately. Yeah, you would imagine. Right, but it still seems odd to me that he would just say that he hadn't seen her, like the mother of his unborn child, particularly if she hadn't reached out and he knew that she was sick. So police did conduct the wellness check that Karen had requested, and it revealed an empty apartment with no sign of Kiera, even though her car was sitting outside. With this information, Chicago PD officially opened a missing persons case for 26-year-old Kiera Coles, which I'm so glad they did because, as we talk about in a lot of our episodes for adults... A lot of the times they're like, oh, they can do whatever the hell they want. Doesn't typically always go down that way. But this, I'm glad they saw that this was suspicious. And considering she was missing, police also did a search of her apartment and both Karen and Josh were there when her home was searched. Karen stated, quote, he said he hadn't seen her, which I found out was a lie. This is regarding Josh. Homicide detective Will Sviller, who has been with Kira's case since the beginning, said, quote, He gave us some conflicting accounts, wasn't consistent on some of the statements, and then didn't want to talk to us. So although Josh possessed no prior criminal record, suspicions against him were mounting. Law enforcement canvassed the neighborhood asking for surveillance footage and came across multiple sightings of Kiera. It appeared that Kiera had arrived home with her groceries on the afternoon of Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018, which was the day that she had gone out to buy some baby stuff and talked to her mom on the phone for the last time. The next sighting came from surveillance footage from another apartment building on Kiera's block and appeared to show Kiera and Josh leaving her apartment together and getting into Kiera's car on the evening of October 2nd. The next time they were seen was later that night at a nearby Walgreens, meaning that they had likely been running errands or just been out together doing other things until they were spotted at Walgreens. The 24-hour Walgreens located at 8628 South Cottage Grove Avenue was just a five-minute drive from Kiara's house. It appeared from the footage that Kiara had been driving her own car with Josh in the passenger seat although there are also reports that they left her house in separate vehicles. So this part is a little bit cloudy, but it does seem like they drove together because at 10.43 p.m. that evening, while Josh waited in the car, Kiera withdrew $400 from her bank account at the Citibank ATM inside Walgreens. Footage then shows her handing the cash over to Josh. And this was very shocking to Karen who claimed, quote, I didn't understand why she would be taking out $400 because she's really cautious with spending. Specifically, since she had become pregnant, Kiara had been really careful with her money, wanting to be completely prepared for when the baby came along. The next footage that police were able to locate didn't show Kiara at all, but her car made an appearance. At 11.45 p.m., so one hour after she withdrew $400 from the ATM in her local Walgreens, surveillance footage from another home on Kiera Street showed her car being driven by an unidentified man, then parked down the street. Strangely, the man exited her car from the passenger side, not the driver's side. Detective Will Sviller weighed in on why he thought this was, quote, I can only speculate. It's not like you're opening a car door in traffic. My speculation is he's staging the seat. While the footage wasn't close enough to tell, it's most likely that the man driving Kiera's car back to her apartment without Kiera was the man that she had left with, her boyfriend and the father of her child, Joshua Simmons. So where was Kiera and what happened in that last hour since she had been spotted on camera? 
and video shows the man exiting her car and then walking to another car parked on the street and then driving away in it. So it was pretty obvious that he had planted her car in that spot. Definitely. So a search of Kiara's car days later revealed her phone, the prenatal vitamins that she had been taking, and a lunch that she had packed, presumably for the day that she had gone missing. Right, so anybody who's wondering, was there any evidence of anything in her car? Like, was there blood found in her car, anything like that? As far as they've released, no. At least not yet. So when Josh, the only person of interest in this case, was questioned, he feigned ignorance and denied involvement. But Kiara's loved ones became increasingly unsettled by this as the days passed. Karen's suspicions were raised even more when he became less and less helpful. In the days following Kiara's disappearance, Karen was passing out missing persons flyers, getting the word out, speaking with police and local news stations, and begging for any information regarding her missing daughter. But Josh was nowhere to be found. Karen said this, quote, I can't understand. You dated my daughter for six years. I took you to be a decent guy. You work and go to church, and now my daughter is pregnant and missing, and you do nothing? But Josh's behavior became especially questionable when investigators learned that he had moved to another state. So Karen claims that in the days following her daughter going missing, Josh was unhelpful and apathetic, like showing no interest in her disappearance at all. And he eventually stopped responding to her or talking to her altogether. But most suspicious of all, shortly after her disappearance, Josh wound up moving to Louisiana with one of the mothers of his other children. And this makes him look even worse that he's already moving over to one of his other baby's mothers. Like he's moving on from Kiera so fast. Yeah, extremely quickly. But that's not the only crazy suspicious thing here. He allegedly changed his name on all social media platforms and a local Chicago news station was still able to obtain an address for him, but he didn't respond to inquiries sent on Kiera's behalf. And there wasn't anything that anyone, Karen, or even the police department handling her daughter's case could really do given that even if Josh was the man dri driving her car that night, sorry, there was no evidence connecting him to foul play involving Kiera. According to Chicago police, who remained very hush-hush about the details of the case in the weeks following her disappearance, a person of interest, get this, visited Kiera's apartment on October 3rd, the day after she was last seen, and they let themselves into her apartment and emerged with several items from inside in hand. While police wouldn't name the person of interest publicly, Detective Sviller said, quote, This person we're referring to is not a stranger. The person has access all the time. And although Karen hasn't even been given this information, she remains sure that this person was none other than Josh Simmons. 